In part four, we'll fix the dial. We'll uh, refinish the cabinet and put it all back together and do a, a final demonstration. In addition, I just got notified that the race that I had been planning for in June is going to happen. So I'm going to show some uh, footage from and some pictures from the uh, last one I did last July. Ouch. Welcome back everybody. In part four, we're going to uh, figure out how to restring this, hopefully get it restrung, uh, install a voltage drop power resistor uh, to drop the input power closer to 110 volts to save the transformer. And then we'll work on the cabinet and then we'll put it all back together and uh, see if we can't uh, finish this project up. I ordered uh, some eyelets and the tools to make the eyelet. I was looking for grommets, but uh, all I could find was eyelets. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take some dial string and I'm going to put it in that eyelet and then I'm going to try to crimp that and see if I can't stabilize that. I believe this is the way it's going to work. The eyelet will be on there and turn it and the way reason I say that is you can see the, the wear marks from the past. Let's see if we can figure out how to restring this. This is going to be like standing on my head, uh, building a ship in a bottle, I think. But uh, I'm not going to be able to film it simply because my hands are going to be like this. And so I'm just going to have to describe what I'm doing um, and go from there. Uh, I, I roughly went ahead and tightened this down at, a, uh, at the 3 o'clock position, this screw and this is also the eyelet and i'll have a little more detail on how i done that eyelet there uh, with another little clip and um, so i've got it at the nine o'clock and this right now the tuning condenser is fully meshed this is at its minimum the needle will be this way and so as progress this will go all the way around until it's at a nine o'clock well it should be pulling this till this it's at three o'clock to keep this on the um, the little trunnion there so the the hard part's going to be is to get all the slack out of this string while it's in this position and i believe i'm going to have to put some sort of little spring here just to keep the tension not doesn't really have to hold a whole lot just to to keep the tension from the string stretching somewhat over the period of time uh, and just keeping the slack out i think is what i'm going to have to do okay this is the uh, first attempt at this uh, like i say i've got this at nine o'clock this at three o'clock put a little just a little tension on the spring uh, the tuning condenser is fully meshed. Now I'm having to hold this in because if you'll think the dial holds this in with that uh, washer, that uh, felt washer, I believe. Now I'm getting a little slippage in the planetary drive and I think it's just worn. But um, as you can see, and I'm holding that in. And now that's all the way out. So I think we're ready to put the dial on and see if we can put that all back together and see if it works. And if this doesn't work, then we'll have to figure something else out. All right, let's, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put some, a little bit of glue on these notch to make sure they're, they don't slip that much. 
So uh, we'll do that and then we'll uh, put the dial on. All right, here's what I did is uh, I took and put the dial indicator on and then I took a, I've got a little piece of uh, oak trim that I used, uh, that I think it was from a dishwasher or something. Anyway, I drilled a hole in it and then I just put it over the end of it and kind of tapped it on and then lined it up. And so now we see how this works and I'm not sure how smooth it is. But uh, it seems to be working okay. So let's uh, let's wire up the uh, the lights. Um, wire those uh, back into the uh, filament voltage, and uh, then we'll work on the uh, AC power. Okay, we're going to um, put a. Uh, voltage dropping resistor uh, in the AC line. Now basically I use Ohm's law but it's not exact with AC so you get close with it. So what I did is I needed to drop approximately 12 volts from 122 on the high when it's high to 110 so that's 12 volt drop and we're pulling about um, 0.4 amps so uh, that's that comes out, if you do the Ohm's Law, about 30 ohms. Well, I'm going to use a 35 ohm. Actually, I, I actually determined it was right around 38. And the reason what I did is I, a year or so ago, I bought this 47 ohm rheostat at 25 watts uh, from Russia. <laughs> and what I did is I used this, uh, I put it in the AC line, and then I put it on the line voltage, and then I uh, turned the radio on and run this down to where uh, it would be 110 volts or so. And then I disconnected it and checked the uh, resistance, and it came out to like 38 ohms. So uh, I went ahead and just bought a 35 ohm, and so we'll put that in there and see how that turns out. Now the way we're going to put this in, and I won't, I just cut me a template uh, out of my Raisin Brand box, and I put it right there. Okay. You're saying, what is he doing? Anyway, we're going to take and we're going to look and position this in here the way I want it mounted right along in here, making sure the cardboard's lined up with the chassis. Then I'm going to mark the holes. I've already reamed these out a little bit so the screws will fit. And then I'm going to mark the holes on the cardboard. Okay? Because if I go over here and mark it on the opposite side, it's not going. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. I don't think. No, it's not going to work. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it in position here with my template. Then take my template just like this and slide it around, put it right there, and then mark it on the other side. Drill from the outside. Then I'll be able to mount this where I want it to be. Alright, I put my power cord in, tied my UL knot, came over with the uh, uh, hot lead uh, through my fuse, going through my resistor up to the power switch, and then the neutral came over here to the uh, other side of the uh, transformer. So let's uh, Let's put some power on it and see how the resistor done. Okay, I've got that plugged in just to the outlet, and I've got the uh, showing what my line is is a 120.5 or so. 
So let's go to the this side of the resistor and see what we've got. 110.2 and sometimes my line voltage will get to 122 or so. So um, right now it's it's sitting right on 110 what the, exactly what it's supposed to be. So uh, uh, it may go on up to 112 during high peak times but uh, I think that's going to work fine. I'm going to leave this on for a little while and see how hot this resistor gets. It's a beautiful day in East Tennessee. It's close to 80 degrees. They were calling for thunderstorms today, but I think they basically have called that off. Maybe a chance of one. You know how that goes. It's that time of year that you can say there's a 20% chance of a thunderstorm and you can nail the weather. <laughs> but um, uh, the humidity's a little higher than I like it, but uh, we'll uh, we'll try to shoot some lacquer. Uh, earlier, I had uh, went ahead and put some uh, dark oak toner on the cabinet. I hope you can see this. It's uh, I'm in bright sun and I can't even see my screen. So there's uh, the front. I didn't do anything other than just clean it up a little bit. And um, there's a few scars on it that I'm not going to do anything with. But there was a dark stain right up in this area here. And uh, so that's the reason I went with the dark walnut. Now if you'll remember, I had uh, the... Um, let's see, how does it go? Something like this. This went on the, the cabinet this way, and one was missing. So I had a friend of mine, Terry, from church. And, uh, and so he, he works with wood. So he, he just fabricated me some more. And I've got to sand them to make them fit and everything. and Fairly close reproduction. And uh, so I've got to sand them get them good and clean and smooth and then I may take them and beat them up a little bit with a hammer just to make them look old and um, then uh, I'm gonna uh, put some dark or deep red mahogany toner to make this actually darker than this and then we're gonna put it all with uh, clear satin toner Okay, I've trimmed these up, did some sanding on them, and um, now what I did is I sprayed some uh, deep red mahogany toner on it first, and then I sprayed it with clear lacquer. As you can tell, it's, it's not much of a finish on there, and the reason I did this is because, uh, if you'll remember in some of my videos, we, we talked about sealing wood and sealing veneer and stuff like that. And then the older uh, radios that's already been finished, there's no need to seal it. Well, this is all new wood. So what I did is I used this, uh, this dark mahogany uh, just to get some color on it. Wasn't, wasn't trying to be real consistent with it. Uh, and then I sprayed it with clear lacquer. Now what I'm going to do, now this is after I've sanded it. So now I'm, I'm going to sand this another time and maybe put another coat on and then sand it again. That's so that all the, the little fibers of wood that's standing up and when I seal it with, with the lacquers, I can sand them off and it'll be smooth. And then I can apply the lacquers and it'll have a, a, a smoother finish than, than if it, uh, it, you know, since this is new wood. All right, I've sanded that. I don't know how much detail, because I'm in the daylight, and it's really hard to see if this is even focusing. Let me move this, maybe. That'll help. But, um, still not totally smooth, but a lot of the fibers that were sticking up is gone. Oh, bingo. I guess there, there's, those thunder, there's those thunderstorms they were talking about. But uh, anyway, another coat. Uh, to seal this and another sanding and then we'll be ready to 
to, to put the final coat of, um, of toner and lacquer on it and then install it on the cabinet. I've got it back together, got it back in the cabinet. You can see, I'm gonna say that Junior took a, a saw or a case knife and done that during the course of its history. I can't back that up, but <laughs> every mark has a history to it. So let's uh, let's tune it around the dial and see uh, the lighting is not that good. I've got to work on my lighting, but I made uh, a reasonable facsimile screw. I don't think you'll be able to point that out or just pick it out. New grill cloth. So let's let's give it a drive around the block and see what it sounds like. One of the things is the blue on the dial seems on the video is more washed out than the orange. The orange is brighter on the video than it really is in real life, and I'm sure it's a, uh, a function of the uh, camera that's just making it look washed out. But it's a it's a not as dark a blue as I would like for it to be, but uh, it um, it looks okay. All right, let's uh, let me move the mic and let's do a little demonstration. Go around the band. That's uh, about eight thirty in the morning. A little skip condition still left, but uh, uh, let's see what we can find. Radio stations off the air. Okay, I think this is going to do this series. We're going to wrap this one up. I got notified uh, yesterday that the race that I had been planning on. Uh, 18th of June is a go so uh, I may start another radio and may put another video out before then but for about two weeks in uh, June I won't be doing anything but uh, on the road um, so uh, just people that don't know that uh, the race will start in West Memphis Arkansas and and in Castle Rock, Georgia, 300 and, sorry, excuse me, 333 miles, give or take. Uh, on foot, I got 10 days to do it. So uh, I'll, uh, I may post a little uh, video from the race I did last July uh, at the, the end of this. And if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. It'll be totally after this. So let's. Uh, Let's let this thing go out in style.
Just loaded on the ferry on the Kentucky side. As you can see, everybody's getting their pictures and uh, everything's a gorgeous day this morning. The water level's down, but everybody's getting on the ferry. And we're going to head over to uh, uh, Dorena Land of Missouri where the race actually starts. So it'll be shoving off here in just a few minutes or so. Sunday morning, We're just now entering parking. There's my good buddy Joe. Say hi, Joe. Howdy. Howdy, howdy Joe. And we're coming in to Parsons for about a mile 106. Uh, we had a little low period going there, a little low action. And uh, a lot of it has to just do with... Uh, going 106 miles. 106 miles, going about four and a half hours sleep. <laughs> so, so there you go. But... Uh, uh, nice little town it goes on for quite a ways and then connects it to another town Perryville I believe but uh, we stopped at a little place back there and it uh, was uh, had a couch and some, a couple of nice chairs and we sacked out just a minute didn't really sleep just dozed a little bit and we got out of that low place and so now we're heading and we're pushing trying to get to the Tennessee River by check-in time, which will be 113 miles. Here we are, the end of day three of Ball State, the beginning of day four, just before check-in. And we're at the Tennessee River Crossing at mile marker 113. And there goes a tugboat tugboat going down we've been going all night long and i'm gonna try to find us a place to rest a little bit and maybe get some chow